Hey, I'm Marie and this is Live in the Living Room. Welcome to episode 9 of Live in the Living Room. I'm your host Dom from Country Chat with Dom. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell just so you don't miss out on any content coming your way. Kicking us off was Amy Kay, which was chosen by the founder of Live in the Living Room, James. Be sure to follow Amy on her social media handles, which are just below. Now, coming up next is an artist that was chosen by the award-winning DC Brown. Here is Carl Ruddy with his song Days Like These. When the sun begins to shine, it will be a crime to waste days like this. There's no shapes up in the sky Free your mind On days like this Days like this Days like this Days like this I'll pop the cap of blue ribbons, come undone Let's have some fun On days like this I'm making music, I'm with my friends I'm praying it won't end On days like this Days like this Days like this Days like this 
be where you are Look who you're with On days like this Sit by the river Watch the water go by You can wash away time on days like this Oh, days like this Days like this Days like this Be where you are Look who you're with On days like this Be where you are Love who you're with on days like this. Absolutely fantastic. Carl Ruddy with Days Like These. Go on, give him a follow on social media. His handles are just below. Thanks as always as well goes to DC Brown for bringing Carl Ruddy to live in the living room. Make sure you give DC Brown a follow as well. He does so much for the music industry and his handles are also below. Now, coming up next is an artist from the founder and managing director of Bells and Gals, Nick Cantwell. Here is the sensational singer and songwriter, Marietta, with her song, Back Another Day. I just made the last one With a suitcase full of everything I owned But God, I'm not the first one It feels there's nothing left for me at home And Dad prefers the letter Mom cries, it gets better But ever since they tore the factory down The kids all leave this town I stay and pray for something out of reach I thought we might be the lucky ones Who didn't have to run Away from all the lessons that they preach I want with all my heart to stay But for now I'll make a start And maybe I'll be back another day Thank God for your memory little piece of home upon my wall In a place I might be nameless But it's something I won't tell you when you call And mom thinks it's got better Oh, oh, oh she's proud and so I let her But ever since they tore the factory down The kids all leave this town we we'll stay and pray for something out of reach I thought we might be the lucky ones That didn't have to run Away from all the lessons that they preach I want with all my heart to stay But for now I'll make a start And maybe I'll be 
back another day This whole town's like a postcard And time stood still and nothing's ever changed But there are new lines on your faces And when you smile I see the turning of a page And Dad kept all my letters And Mom was right, it's better But ever since they tore the factory down The kids all leave this town Or stay and pray for something out of reach I thought we might be the lucky ones That didn't have to run Away from all the lessons that they teach I want with all my heart to stay But for now I'll make a start And maybe I'll be back Maybe I'll be back And maybe I'll be back Another day mm. Absolutely stunning from Merriad. That was Nick Cantwell's choice this week here on Live in the Living Room. Make sure you're following her on her social media. Her handles are also below. So yes, you tuned into Live in the Living Room, episode 9, and you are but are you following us on our social media yet? I mean, you're going to be missing out on so much stuff. We've got a load of festivals. We've got a load of gigs coming up in the near future. So be sure to be following us on there. Now, if you're not following us on there, you'll miss out on who the next guests of Live in the Living Room are. And who knows what we are, what else we might be doing on there. You won't know unless you follow us. <laughs> Our handles are just below as well, so just give us a search. Coming up next here on Live in the Living Room is a selection from James's Right Hand Woman. She is the founder of Scarlet River Management, and as always, her choices are top notch. Just totally amazing. Here is Rachel Selleck's choice this week. It's a little bit country with better honky tonk. Oh, 
How brilliant was that? A little bit country with better honky tonk. Be sure to give them a follow on social media. Their handles are just below. Now, they were absolutely fantastic at the Live in the Living Room Gives Back event down in London earlier this month, earlier in November. And I just, I cannot wait for the next event to come around. It's going to be so good. Keep an eye out on our social media handles. Just for when any information is released. Now, coming up here on Live in the Living Room is the interview segment of the show where I get to chat with artists and find out more about them. This time I got to chat with the brilliant Paul Jupe. Hi, Paul. Hi, Dom. Great to meet you. Thanks for having me on, mate. Much appreciated. 
thank you for coming on. I mean, one of the reasons why I wanted to get you on was because I absolutely loved our chat on the podcast. And oh, it was great fun. <laughs> I want everybody to meet you and I want everybody to know about My Friends Are Talking. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, I, I had a great time on the podcast. It, it was absolutely fantastic um, just to chat about um, food as well. <laughs> that's what it's about that is life that is what the whole show is about <laughs> it was now, great we've just had the performance of my friends are talking yes tell me about what it's like you know obviously going into the studio and performing that compared to doing an acoustic version which you just which we've just seen yeah um it's uh i send the music well, what with modern technology now my music all goes off to france you know so it's all drop boxed across um, and, uh, you know, the, the Gary over in, uh, as I say, in France, in La Frey group, he does all the mixing and things like that for me. And then it comes back and I'll do some extra bits. And we, we bounce back and forth and do it that way. So I don't actually go into the studio as such because I've got my own little studio here. You know, very humble thing going on here. But it, it serves my needs, you know. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, I write the song, lay the tracks down, then it go over, it come back and we'll you know, kind of just uh, add bits to it and do that sort of thing. So, yeah, it's a very different experience from being kind of live in the studio as such. How has it been in terms of promotion? Because it's been out for a few weeks now. Is my first yeah, it's, it's done done very, very well. I'm, I'm very pleased with it. It's, you know, lots of uh, plays on um, Spotify um, and radio stations are picking it up as well and, uh, you know, running with it, which is fantastic. So, you know, as, as I said to you in the podcast, uh, you put these things, songs out there, but you don't know if they're going to, people are going to like them or not. You just hope that they do. And when you get a response that's, you know, quite, uh, you know, welcoming, it's, it's, it's a pleasure. It really is. Well, as with everything that you do, absolutely. Oh, thank you. Music. I've, I've said this in the podcast and I'll say it all the time. I'll say it to your face. I'll say it not to your face. I'll say it behind your back. You know, I absolutely <laughs> love what you do. Thank you very much, Dom. I really appreciate it. Thanks for the support. Really do. Now, the aim is to try and get you to the Live in the Living Room Gives Back event next year. Yes, please. <laughs> I'd <end>. love to. <laughs> what, um, what kind of, when you're going to do a gig or a festival or any kind of event, you know, what, what's the planning that's involved? You know, do you create your set list? Do you kind of like think, oh, okay, so I'm in, I'm in London or um, you know, up north, down south. Is yeah. there like certain geographical differences to set lists or? Well, not not really. I, you know, obviously with new songs coming out, I've been writing quite rapidly through this year. So obviously there's been like new songs added almost every gig that I've done. Uh, the gigs are yeah. kind of been spaced out this year because I'm kind of just, um, from a live point of view, just breaking into the country music scene, really. Um, so I'm building up the gigs um, and I'm, I'm happy to say that the gigs are starting to build up already for next year. So that's fantastic. Um, so really, it's kind of like, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, some, maybe I'll do a cover um, or I'll, I'll take that cover out and put one of the new the new single in and that type of thing, you know. Um, yeah. So there's definitely set lists involved, a lot of rehearsal before you go out, obviously, you know, and <laughs> make sure it's, it's, it's definitely there in your head. Um, yeah, but it just varies on, on what singles out or, or where, whereabouts is the, the gig is positioned, really. Now, in terms of, because the gig itself that we're doing in London is yeah. in May, I believe we're talking about at the moment. Yeah. Is there going to be new music released before then? Um, well, yes, I'm hoping so. Um, I've got, uh, the, the songs that I've done, I'm adding another two that are finished. They're, they're in the bag and done. Um, and I'm not releasing them. I'm really releasing them as part of the album with the back, backlog of, of songs that I've got. Hopefully that album will be done and finished sometime in January, uh, mm -hmm. around that sort of time, um, with two new songs, as I say. Um, so, um, yes, there will be two new songs. And also I've just got the finals for my uh, Christmas song back. Literally heard it about... 10 minutes ago, so you're the first one to know it. I'm, I'm absolutely over the moon with the way it's come back from La Fere Group. Um, it just sounds fantastic. So uh, they've done a fantastic job for me, um, and we've been working on that for the last two, three weeks. Yeah. Um, and that's coming out on December the 4th, but I'm going to release a video and all, or, you know, pre-save and all that stuff on iTunes very soon, within days, I hope. Oh, that is exciting. that's going to be a great segue to what I was going to ask you next. <laughs> great. Um, so before I start, I ask that question, kind of, what is the feel to the Christmas song? You know, is it a sad Christmas song? Is it a happy Christmas song? What can you tell us? Um, yeah, so I, I would, 
one words a warm Christmas song, you know. Um, it's kind of you know it's all about the things that are going on, you know the um, you know um, children being excited at Christmas time, looking up to the skies and that type of thing, and basically the family coming around. So it's just one of those very warm. It's, and it's called Christmas time, um, and it uh, it's just one of those kind of flowy, warm songs that I wanted to produce this year. So uh, so yeah, and uh, the results, as I say, I'm I'm uh, over the moon with them, so I'm quite excited to get it out there as quick as possible. You know, that's brilliant. I can't wait to hear it. Now, the question oh, I was going to ask is: Are you get starting to get prepared for Christmas? Have you got your Christmas shopping done? Decorations? Mm-hmm. No, nothing like that yet. No, no, I. We do, you know, we usually start uh, December the 1st, we're at the beginning of Advent, um, although there's, there's Christmas tracks on and everything. I know on the radio this morning, I was going down into Portsmouth and um, there were so many Christmas songs already. Uh, they started very early this year, but, um, you know, it's great. Uh, I, I love Christmas. It's one of my favourite times of year and one of my family's favourite times of the year. So um, it's time when you can, you know, just shut down and just spend time and, and just relax and, you uh, Eat yourself, you know. <laughs> that's what it's about. <laughs> yeah, Particularly that's the right. mince pies. The mince pies for me are just quintessentially Christmas. Yes, hundred percent. Yeah, mince pies, all of it. I love, you know, I love that. Yeah, as you know, I'm vegetarian, so we don't have turkey, but um, we, you know, we obviously um, have different sort of variations of mince pies and things like that. And it's yeah. lovely. I love it bits. Main reason why I asked though about you know Christmas and being prepared for Christmas is because on you just mentioned about Christmas songs, but what really makes Christmas start is when you see the Coca Cola advert come on TV. Hundred percent, yeah. And yeah. it's been on. It has officially been, been on. on. You know, funny you should say that because literally it came on the other day, and I went to my wife Karen and just said, "That's it. It's Christmas now. Then <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be done, isn't it?" So. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for coming. Now, where can we find you on social media? I'm off. Uh, you can find me across all you know the, the social media sites uh, under Paul Duke Music, um, and my website is Paul Duke www.pauldupe.com. Um, and yeah, any, anywhere on there, and just look for Paul Duke Music, and I should be there, and uh, you should be able to listen to my songs and see what I'm doing and getting on with. Brilliant. Thank you so much. And again, that song was "My Friends Are Talking." Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And uh, thanks, Don, for having me on. I really, really appreciate that. That is the conversation I had with the brilliant, fantastic, sensational Paul Jupe. He's such a great guy. Please, you got to check him out. Check out his social media handles there below. And he's bringing out some Christmas music as well very, very, very soon. So if you're not following him, you won't know when it's going to be released unless you're following me as well because i'll probably tell the world because he's that good coming up next here on live in the living room is the instructional and advice segment of the show it's where if you're an upcoming artist or a seasoned pro and you want to hone your techniques in the music industry find some advice If you're struggling to work out where you need to go to next, we provide you with some of the answers to those key questions. Here is Simon Birds explaining what it takes to be heard on the radio. Hi, I'm Simon Birds from ARC Radio and I am delighted to have been asked by James Vince of Live in the Living Room to do this little video explaining a little bit more about maybe best practice when it comes to submitting your music to a radio station. So first of all, do some research. Research the station that you're sending the music to. Does it play music of your genre? Is it something that you want to be associated with? Like and follow on all social platforms. This shows the station that you are going to support them in return of their support of you. And prepare your press kit. I cannot express how important it is that your press kit is on the money. So when it comes to emailing, find out the email address you need to send it to. In the case of ARC Radio, it's submissions at arcradio.online. Send it anywhere else, we will get it, but that's the folder we go to, that's the email account we go to when we come to playlisting. The email itself should be fairly brief and to the point, highlighting important information. The release date, if it's embargoed until when it's embargoed, a short bio, and confirm that the song is appropriate for radio play, for broadcast, i.e. there's no 
bad language, uh, or inappropriate lyrics in there. Remember, you're emailing a human being. Pleasantries cannot be underrated. You do need to be as friendly as you possibly can be. When it comes to sending the information, attaching files is great. But remember that station executives, presenters get an awful lot of emails. We certainly do. And the inbox fills up very, very quickly. It is far better to send a link to a Dropbox, a Google Drive, a OneDrive, any of the above file sharing services. I'd also find out if the presenter has a preferred method of receiving the files. For example, I'm not a fan of WeTransfer. Best practice for me would be to send a link to the song on SoundCloud or other listening platforms, but not Spotify or YouTube or any other streaming service. This is because it's a hassle if you don't have access to an account on there and you cannot download from these sites. It also means that the presenter or radio executive can listen without having to download the track which they might not wish to play. Ideally, the link on Sound to SoundCloud should have a download link. Uh, so if the song is liked, it can be downloaded without any difficulty. It's available there on the website. If you'd rather not do this for whatever reason, then the next best thing would be a link, as we said before, to a shared folder, a file sharing service within the email. Within the folder, I would advise that you should have a press release for the single, both WAVE and MP3 files. Most file sharing services do allow the listening of these files in the browser. So again, you've got that instant ability to listen, to see if you like the song, if it's suitable for airplay on the station you're sending it to. You should also include the cover art and any other documents you feel appropriate. Some people choose to add a lyric sheet, for example. Some people choose to add additional promo shots. It's entirely up to you. Don't always expect a reply. We are, personally, myself and Charlotte are incredibly busy. We also have an awful lot to get through. We do try and reply when we are playing something or when we're not playing something, but we don't always manage it. Ordinarily, if you're going to be played, you will be tagged on social media by the radio broadcaster. If you don't hear back, please don't harass. Just accept that the song hasn't been chosen and go again with your next release. Building relationships are, of course, key. So if you do get a reply, if you do get a response, then make sure you reply and get to know the person that's making the decision and that is spinning your record. I would suggest you never, unless you know this person and you maybe consider them a friend, in which case it's totally different, obviously, but do not make contact directly through social platforms. Not only is this an intrusion into the individual's personal affairs, but it's also likely to get forgotten. Most people want everything in one place. We were talking about earlier with the submissions at email address for ARC Radio. Everything in one place means it's not going to get forgotten. It's going to be there where we want it. If you do want to use socials, which is an absolutely fine way of doing it, if you want to maybe drop a line to say, how do I submit my music, that sort of thing, use the official pages, use the official channels. I would suggest that most radio stations on their website will have somewhere information to tell you how to submit your music. I would always advise doing the research in the first place. Using PR companies, well, that is absolutely great and it's a relatively cost-effective way of getting your music to a huge number of stations and presenters. However, make sure you do your research and ensure that they always send out the information appropriately and in a timely fashion. There is no harm to ask in asking to see a list of stations they work with and examples of their work maybe try and find somebody that's worked with them to get an idea of what their work is like. Finally, this is possibly the most important thing. You should never, ever be paying for airplay. Any station that does this clearly doesn't have the correct standards for airplay because they'll play anything if they get paid for it and is taking advantage of indie artists wanting to get their name out there. If somebody asks you to pay for airplay, you always say 
Well, I hope you found that helpful and I hope you've enjoyed it. And you never know, I might pop up on another video for live in the living room in the future. Thanks ever so much. Bye now. Thank you, Simon, for coming on and showing us what it really takes to get airplay of artists' music on the radio. Now, give Simon a follow on his social media. His handles are just below. And check out Arc Radio as well. Both Simon and Charlotte have done so much work to get Arc where it is to this day. Just They've put their blood, their sweat, their tears, their time, their dedication... It's all there. It's such a great station. Coming up next here on Live in the Living Room is an artist that was chosen by our American counterpart, Trey. Here is Plastic Angels with Not Afraid. <laughs>
Thank you so much, Trey, for bringing Plastic Angels here on Live in the Living Room. Be sure to give them a follow on social media. Their handles are just below. Thank you for tuning into this week's Live in the Living Room. I've been your host, Dom. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bells, which are just below, just so you don't miss any of our new content. Here is our final performance of the show, chosen by the angel of the airwaves, Jess T. And it is absolutely smashing. Here is Long Stay with California Sunrise. Bye for now. Yeah.